option. Question number three, uh, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement that the Wellington housing shortage is a problem of success? Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes I do, and as I said to the member when he asked almost exactly the same question a month ago, I stand by my full statement which went on to say the demand for Wellington rental housing was, and I quote, certainly concerning for people who are looking for accommodation. I think it's pretty well, and I also said I think this is pretty well understood by the Council uh, and that they are working towards enabling more housing. But I hope the developments here aren't going to be opposed by the Labor Party as they have been in Auckland. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. What does he say to the Wellington families living in garages and motels because he knocked down the state houses and didn't rebuild? That's right. Uh, well, Mr Promise. Speaker, part of the reason there's a major change uh, in, this, in the way we run state housing is precisely because of the problems in the Hutt Valley, and that is old stock, unsuitable for being occupied, and very and, and slow response times for rebuilding it. That's why we're changing the system. But we're being held up in Auckland by the Labor Party opposing the Point England development, which would enable hundreds more social houses to be built. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Putting aside the fact that building a house five years ago is not much different to building a house today, what does he say to the young families in Wellington struggling to pay the rent, let alone save for a house? People like Francis from Lower Hutt who wrote to me to say, quotes, prices are out of reach and my husband and I both work 50 hours a week. Mr Speaker, that, uh, with respect to the individual families, we need to make sure that uh, they are receiving all the assistance they're eligible for, uh, because we do spend $1.3 billion a year on accommodation supplement, and that family may or may not be eligible. If rents are rising, they're eligible for more support. Fortunately, the Wellington City Council recognises more houses are needed because Wellington is now growing for the first time in a long time. And I hope that Labor won't oppose the developments the way it's opposing new developments in Auckland. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Has he been to the Hutt Valley and looked at all the land that has sat empty for years under his mismanagement of housing New Zealand while local families can't afford an affordable place to live? Right, Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I know the Hutton Valley reasonably well. I've seen um, some of the empty sections to which the member is referring to and also seen the large stock of old, out-of-date housing corp state houses, which are the product of the previous lazy government changing nothing. And we're setting out to change it uh, in, the, in the same way as we've got large-scale redevelopment going on in Auckland. But as I've said to the member, I'm quite sure that as soon as we start developing in the Hutt Valley, Labor will start opposing it. Supplementary. A supplementary question, Andrew Little. Given his knowledge of and concern about the empty spaces littered across the Hutt Valley, will he immediately build on that land a combination of good, affordable starter homes for young families to buy and state houses for Kiwis in need? And if not, why not? Right hon. Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I'm advised that those plans are underway and I would hope, I would hope that the Labor Party will not organise community opposition to the developments as they have done in Auckland for Three Kings, which they forced to the Environment Court with a several year delay. And now in this House they're going to vote against the Point England Bill which will allow hundreds of new social houses. Point of order, point of order, Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, the question was very clearly about Wellington. That large extended uh, rent at the end of the Prime Minister's answer had nothing to do with the question that was asked. Well, of course, I'm the judge of whether it is a large extended rent, and I don't believe that making a comparison with a contemporary um, housing estate in a similar way is such. 
supplementary question, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What about the current situation is it that the Prime Minister just does not get? There's a housing crisis now. Families are struggling to make ends meet now. Families are living in garages and motels now. Isn't it time to stop playing silly buggers and get houses built now? Right on, <laughs> Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, as the Minister of Finance pointed out a bit earlier, uh, we've got the largest construction boom New Zealand has seen for decades. And in fact, some of the complaints now are just that costs are escalating reasonably quickly and labour's hard to find. So New Zealand is building houses pretty much as fast as it can, except in Point England, where the Labour Party are opposing a large-scale development, and Three Kings, where they are organising the community opposition to a large-scale development. That's why they have no credibility on this issue. Question number four. Order, order, order. You may think you'll get away with a whole lot because you've got the relief teacher, but you won't. <laughs> Question number four, Catherine Delahunty.